Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Mac Merlin stream. I know I don't usually stream on Friday nights, but I'm busy this Saturday, so no Saturday build stream. Let's see, see an Utsavrati, Nestec, Claudiac, CP the Brick. Thanks, guys, for joining in so early. As you guys can see from the stream title down below, we are building the keyboard that I unboxed yesterday. This is the Command 65 from Play Keyboard. Play Keyboard is a store located in, in Taiwan. And this Play 65 is an exploded layout, 65%, as you guys can see from the picture there. Um, that is not an aluminum chassis. That is actually a ABS chassis, available in four colors, classic, ivory, steel, and navy. The one that I have is the steel variant. Um, I was also sent two batteries for the Bluetooth functionality. A couple other specs. This guy has a IO3 daughter board of sort. It's not exactly an IO3 daughter board, but it seems compatible with one. And what initially drew me to this board was that the fact that it had a buzzer in it. So after unboxing it last night, it's just a little piezo speakers. If you guys remember my my clue board Rev4 and my Volcano 660, both boards had, had that buzzer as well. Um, this board also has a bunch of silicon dampening in it. 500 units available, or 500 for each color, 2,000 around the world, totally. Made in Taiwan, and this group bike expires on the 18th. I'll be talking about this again during the Sunday build stream. Here's the steel, the steel case, as you guys can see. Looks pretty good so far. I'm not putting in the actual, um, what do you call that? The actual logo on it quite yet until the very end. I think it's more of a finishing touch deal. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Here's the PCB. I've already put stabilizers on it. Um, it's only been like the last couple months, but I have switched over to using Owlab stabs. They seem to have much better a stabilizer wire quality and feels just as good as Duroc so I've completely switched over to them. They're a bit more expensive but definitely a lot more reliable. Yesterday I talked about using the palm plate. So the cool thing about this palm plate is that it is molded. Um, there's also going to be a layer silicon dampening in the middle between PCB and plate and there was also an aluminum plate. Um, after much thinking about it, I kind of, I don't want the board to sound very, very deep. Like sometimes when a board sounds too, be too, too deep, it sounds very muffled. And based on what I've seen online so far of previous build streams or builds, um, I think it's a little too deep for my taste. So I'm gonna go with the aluminum plate. I've also been told that this one, this is just a prototype, so it might not fit 100%, but the CNC aluminum plate will definitely fit 100%. So just to be safe and also for sound preferences, I'm gonna stick with this. Two months ago, K KPD fans sent me a, a um, unknown switch. An unknown Texi switch, you guys can see here. Um, so we still don't have a name for it. But just a quick recap, it is a nylon bottom, HPE top, UPE stem with 13.5 millimeter stem and 63.5G dual spring. So, <coughs> so we'll be using these. Like so. Then we'll put it all in. Okay, this is a hot swap PCB, so no problems there. But yeah, really interested about these switches. These switches felt so good. See, Baby Coop, subscribe with Prime. Thank you very much for your support. So yeah, this should provide the right amount of clack to, to um, cut through all, all of the dampening and the plastic ABS case. Like, as much as I like my KBD67 light, or I felt that it was maybe a little too deep sounding. Yeah, hopefully we won't have that issue here. <coughs> mm. 
There we go. Make the switches yourself. Try to make it sticks. Try to make it stick. I don't know what you need. Oh, name the switches. Yeah. Well, KD fans is taking suggestions, so I've told them you can call them magic switches. Yeah, these are completely stock. And two more switches, and we're done. Hooray. Okay, let's go look at, does this have a build guide? No, it does not. But I know Barry was sending me a few, few things. So let's just review what Barry said. Bluetooth module is not hot swappable. Do not plug it in when cable is plugged. Okay. Uh, oh, there's not much. Um, plate is adjustable after installation. You can put on some keycaps to see if it's in position and adjust it by hand. Okay, all right, should be fairly, fairly self-explanatory, fingers crossed. See, hyper mode arts, honestly, it's the right move, Merlin. Being less picky definitely keeps your options way more open. I don't know what the right move was. Are you talking about hot swap? Split backspace. <laughs> yeah. It's not something I've ever um, really appreciated, to be honest. I've tried. I've tried many years. I think like over these last couple of years, I've really learned to, to understand my own preferences and why I like them. Oh yeah, one thing, all of the screw positions have a metal inserts in them so you won't damage the case when you repeatedly take it apart. That's good. All right, how does this come together? Not really much info. Okay, so that's where the batteries go. Okay, let's put those in first. Go. Bluetooth module is right there. You can put this in. Oh yeah, and welcome to the chat, Alex26K. I see that you are a first time chatter. All right, let's plug the Bluetooth module in. BLE module, not hot pluggable. It's so funny that he had to put that on. Funny and sad, because I bet someone's tried to do it already and like screwed something up. Right. Let's see. Yep. Just screw in like that. I guess so. It's probably got standoffs or stuff. Man, I wish that there were instructions. <laughs> okay, I assume that Yep, no instructions in this list. All right. So, let's see. I would assume, since there are standoffs, uh, huh. 
see first time chat from ride bike Merlin. do you go back and forth between mac and pc um i used to but ever since my stream pc died i'm currently just on a mac mini yeah it's the new m1 mac mini so it works very well actually in fact it was it's a lot quieter than my old system like i bought it just to test it out but i ended up just really loving it all right Nokia batteries have not seen these since I last had a Nokia phone. <laughs> okay, come on. Hopefully the pictures. What can I glean from the pictures here? Ugh. See, look at that. Even the picture doesn't have the board screwed in all the way yet, so... Hmm. Yeah, Barry didn't send me anything either. He did send me the via file, the via JSON file and everything. Okay, oh, hold on, hold on. He sent me an Imgur album. Or a Flickr album. Here, let's try this. Okay. Doesn't tell me very much either. It almost looks like the batteries are friction fitted. Like they're just supposed to stay there on their own. That that doesn't seem right, does it? Okay. I see it mounted, but Jeez, I feel like if you turn the board upside down in this case the batteries would just rattle against the PCB. Oh wait, maybe it's this bar that holds it in place. Oh, oh yeah, maybe it's that bar that holds it in place. That makes sense. No, that does not make sense. These are all very great pictures, just doesn't have the information that I need. You know, just to be safe, I'm gonna build it without the, without the batteries. There's just not enough information going, going on here. Worst case scenario, single strip of tape to hold the batteries. Yeah, it's probably another way to do it. Oh, I can see what he means by you can adjust the plate. M many questions with the build. Many questions. Let's see, Kraken X says, this isn't a production model. How did you get it then? Um, I am a keyboard content creator and occasionally I get many vendors who like to send me stuff for um, trying stuff out and all that. Now, this is the oddest mount I've ever seen. Okay. So very quick question. Um, I didn't exactly know how to put the batteries in. It looks like it's friction mounted. There's nothing screwing the battery in. So I was a little concerned that if I turned the board upside down, the battery would just fall out. Merlin is in crisis about this build. Crisis? That's such a strong word. It's like a, it's like I'm freaking out or something. <laughs> It's still a bit loose on the side. Okay. There we go. Okay, that seems to click 
to clip in better if you do it before you install the PCB. Let's try it out. Okay, that seems to be fine. Yeah, okay. That seems to work out much better. Okay, let's push it in a little bit more. There we go, okay. So the trick is to install it before you put the PCB in. There we go. And to install the battery before you install the bracket. That's how it's done. Barry, will there be instructions provided when the when the actual production units come out? Because there were, there were many questions that I had with the build. <laughs> Put that in first. One for Bluetooth switch and two for custom key codes. Ah, okay. Dragon says, I mean, I've met some people with temper problems that would probably disagree with you. About the batteries? Well, if people have temper problems, that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> There we go, okay. I call this the Dairy Queen test. <laughs> there we go, okay. It's much better. Okay. So we should probably put keycaps on the top row first just to make sure it doesn't, doesn't come into contact. So let's do that. So just because it's a vintage looking board, the key set I'm wanting to put on is the OTC 9009.
Here we go. Let's, let's take this. Mod, pipe key is the way to go. Alliance with tab. It's really all just preference. You know, it's your board. You decide what you want to do with it, what colors you like and all that. I like how that sounds. Oh, that sounds great. Have I gotten to try profit? Yes, I tried to profit this afternoon, actually. I have a I have a friend who's really into keyboards who lives not too far from me, so he let me try his profit. Let's see. Okay, I'm I'm gonna try putting this in Bluetooth mode. Okay, so it's wireless right now. Let's turn it on. Okay. It beeped. All right, how do I turn on my Bluetooth? Bluetooth. Turn. Bluetooth is on. There we go. Connect. It's been connected. It's connected here. Let me test. Woo! It worked! Wireless and all that. Nice. All right, so for those of you who want to check out the board, the group buy does end this coming Thursday on the 18th. You can check it out over there and play keyboards. If you want to check out this key set, this is the new OTC 9009 all the way on OmniType. You can check it out over there. There we go. Let's try doing a typing test. All right, let's do it with the beeping on just because it's fun. Okay, so it seems like if you type too fast, it tends to kind of distort the sound. So maybe I need to type slower. As so I've been using this board for a long period, I'll say it's annoying. It sounds pretty good. I just dislike the exploded layout. That's actually what I love about it. Exploded layout board. Here, I'm going to try and type slower so the beeps are more pronounced. There you go. So yeah, if you type at 88 words per minute like I just did there, that seems to be slow enough or that might be the fastest you can go to separate to separate out each of the beeps. Let's see. Yeah, I think the board sounds really good. Right here, let's turn off the beeps or I'm just turning off the board. Cuz I don't want to plug it into V again. It's just a whole mess right there. But yeah, you know, I'll type the same thing again. Yeah, I actually really like the sound now. Yeah, I'm glad that I picked these switches so it's not so muddy sounding. It's still a muddy sounding board, but 
I can forgive that because the board looks so cool. ABS case and all that. Imagine this board with a solenoid I would buy, oh man. I'd love to see a board that had like a see-through portion over here or like somewhere so that you could see the solenoid actuate back and forth. Someone make something like that. Quick review time number one. Okay, let's go, let's go talk about the bad things first and then, then we'll talk about the good things. Bad things, um, this is a prototype. So, um, really wish that there was a instruction manual. Like most of it was pretty, you know, you, you could work your way through it, but stuff like the order that you had to do things was a little not um, conceivable. I do expect that, that when the production units come out, Barry over here, Barry Boy 5566 will have appropriate instructions so the build will go much faster. Um, number two, I like how the finish looks here, but I feel like when I hold it like this, it gets a little sticky. But it could just be like, you know, the my like hand, because it's pretty hot here in Seattle right now. We're in the low 90s. So maybe I'm just sweating. And it feels sticky to me. Because this is basically, this is just an ABS chassis that's been painted. Don't use alcohol to clean it or anything like that. Don't use alcohol to clean any board, even if it's not made of this material. Let's see, another bad thing that I can think of. While I was typing, right? While I was typing, this this um, height over here was a little higher than I'm used to. I think this is, I guess this is like 22 millimeters. Like it's not uncomfortable. It's just a little higher than I'm used to. Yeah, I think that's really all from the quick build stream here. Okay, now stuff that I like about the board. I like that this is super lightweight, right? Oh, I love that. I, I love that super lightweight. I'm glad that it uses a IO3 universal daughter board standard. It's not one that follows C1, C2, or C3, but it definitely fits that same format. So I really like that. Um, I love that the board is hot swappable. I like that it's got all these little switches. I still have to figure out how to really use these because I'm I'm a bit confused as to how they work. <laughs> this is this is only my second custom board that is wireless. And I'll probably be using this a lot simply because it's wireless. I think the board sounds pretty good. Like it's definitely definitely not like end game sound, but it's not muddy. I will have to say that's that's more to do with the switches that I chose. Especially if I change out the keycaps to like an ABS one, it's not gonna sound it's it's gonna sound a little bit more brighter. But yeah, overall a very good experience. It's like a lot of the issues that I had was with the build, but you know, all of that can be resolved by having build instructions and all that. Um, this is a top mount board. It's probably the most unique top mount I've seen. In fact, before Barry showed up, we were having a discussion in chat that it, it seemed like it was almost a tray mount, but we just didn't know what to call it. But yeah, overall, I think this is a pretty decent board for um, 229 bucks. That's for the Bluetooth edition. If you don't care about wireless connectivity, then yeah, you can save 10 bucks. So if it's just 10 bucks, I know 10 bucks doesn't mean as much here in the United States. Like it's could mean a lot more outside of the United States, but I think that's a small enough difference that you should just spring for the Bluetooth option anyway. The Bluetooth option is basically just adding on batteries. You know, so yeah, try it out. Try it out. Um, it was a very quick connection to my Mac Mini here. Didn't really have to do much. All I had to do was go go into settings, turn on Bluetooth, and search for this device and press connect. Connected super quick. Check out the board at Play Keyboards. Group by expiring this Thursday on the 18th, and check out the cool new keycaps from OmniType. All right, guys. Thanks for joining in. Catch you next time. Goodbye, everyone.